about it, if you all could humor me just for a minute. I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself in a situation that's like you. Maybe you're in a dark room. Maybe you're on the top floor of a skyscraper. Maybe you're on stage in front of a bunch of high school students in your first TED Talk ever. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to imagine that you're joined by someone, and although you don't know who they are, they seem vaguely familiar to you. And this person tells you, don't worry, it's going to be okay. I know that the situation you're in is scary, but trust me, because I've been in your shoes, and I can help to guide you out. Suddenly that face doesn't seem so scary anymore. That familiar face becomes an instant source of trust. And when your body's natural response to fear of fight or flight kicks in, that voice encourages you to fight. And better yet, it tells you that you don't have to fight alone. I wish that I could tell you that I knew from personal experiences the role that familiarity plays in lessening the threat of scary situations. But unfortunately, that is not my story. Because when I was getting ready to go to the fifth grade and finally become the queen of the hill at my elementary school, my dad got promoted to shift supervisor on his job at the bar refinery. We grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and if you know anything about Lake Charles, you know that everyone either works at the oil refinery or on the casino boats. And so while my dad was moving on up in his job, he also decided to move us on out of the hood. You see, my dad had always imagined that we would experience a better life than what he had growing up and that we would be able to have access to opportunities that he never did. And so for him, this meant building, building a huge six-bedroom home for our eight-member family, leaving the inner city of Lake Charles, and moving into a suburban neighborhood. And for the first time in my 10 years of living, I was in unfamiliar territory. So whenever, whenever I close my eyes and think about a scary situation, I think about my middle and high school years. And it's not just because I was someplace new, because I do believe that sometimes growth requires change. And it's not because of your traditional new kid on the block, going through hormones, worrying about popularity contests or the, SA, or the SATs. But it's because I was fighting feelings of doubt insecurity, loneliness, and fear, and I had to fight those feelings all by myself. At my new school, there was no one who looked like me or represented where I came from who could tell me, it's okay, I know you're afraid, but trust me because I can help to guide you out. And so during my adolescent years, as I was beginning to form beliefs about myself and make decisions about my future, I kept getting stuck with the question of why. Why am I the only black girl in my business class, or on the dance team, in the student government, and on prom court? Why are none of my teachers black? Why is studying American history and even celebrating Black History Month suddenly so awkward? And why did we have to leave the black community in order for me to have a better chance at success? And Growing weary and tired of battling these questions for seven years in middle of high school, when it became time to go to college, I couldn't think about where the college was or what major I wanted to choose. I couldn't think about the tuition or the credibility of the school. The only thing that I could think about was my desire to escape into a place where I finally could feel safe. And so I only applied to HBCUs. I landed at Curry Buchanan University, right outside of Houston, Texas. I majored in computer engineering. And it was one of the best decisions that I could have made in my life at that time. For four years, I was able to finally focus more on my future and less on my fear. But that season was short-lived, however, because upon graduating, from college with a computer engineering degree, I then became a black woman in tech. I joined one of the world's largest tech consulting firms, 
And those feelings of doubt, insecurity, loneliness, fear, the confusion about who I was and what my place was in this world, those things began to rise up inside of me again. The questions of why happened again. Why am I the only black woman on all of my tech teams? Why are there no women in leadership? And why, whenever I have a discussion with my white male manager, does he feel it's okay to tell me that maybe I'm being too idealistic? After seven, another seven years of fighting that battle, I decided that I did not want to fight anymore. And so I quit. I became another statistic of a black woman who leaves her tech career early due to lack of support, lack of community, and lack of representation. And although I'm not always proud of my decision to quit, I do feel like it's important for me to share my story because I know that there's someone out there who needs to know that their experiences and feelings are real and they're not alone. I need to hear that whenever I was a little girl. And I know that somewhere out there, there's a young black woman who's beginning to make decisions about her future while also questioning her, her place in this world. Because to be a black woman who desires for any level of success as is presented to us means that we are living in a perpetual state of fear and confusion. As we start as little girls trying to climb the ladder of success as we're told and show that we should, and what that looks like is transitioning from one scary environment to the next. Moving out, to the, moving out into the suburbs, maybe going to an Ivy League college, and if you dare become a black woman in tech and want to take up space, you go work for Google. And I don't even want to tell you, maybe you can Google what it's like to be a black woman that wants to be. <laughs> and so, so maybe you can Google what it's like to be a black woman that works for Google. So as you transition, from one scary environment into the next. We, without having anyone to guide us, women are leaving the black tech, black women are leaving their tech career in droves. And what we see, sorry, and though it's admirable to try and solve the problem at the professional level, what we see at the professional level is merely a symptom of what exists within our educational system and in our institutions of higher learning. And so, how do we solve this problem? We have to begin giving girls role models while they are in grade school. We have to support them with culturally relevant education. And we have to provide them with mentors who represent them and their experiences. Understanding my responsibility to those who, to little girls who are growing up like me, I decided that it was time to get back into the fight. And in 2017, I started a nonprofit organization that helps to connect black and brown girls with technology. We help to show them that they are not only represented in tech, but also represented in leadership. The organization is called HYPE, and HYPE is a supportive community of girls who are learning and growing together while celebrating one another and also finding mentorship from women who represent them and their experiences, who can speak to them in a way that only comes from personal understanding. I did this because I understand the importance of connection and community. I understand the role that representation plays for a girl who's trying to form decisions about herself and what she believes in. I understand the role that representation plays in the decisions that we make about our future. And I understand the role that it plays in building confidence whenever you're in a situation where fear begins to rise up. And so we introduce our girls to women in technology, brilliant black women in technology who are doing amazing things. And we've been able to do this for hundreds of girls over the past few but what we can't have are more women in technology doing what I did and quitting their jobs. We want to encourage women to stay the course and to fight the fight and to not give up. 
We need to do this by celebrating them, by recognizing them, and by connecting them with a generation of girls who are depending on them to be successful, giving them a greater purpose in the work that they do outside of just knowing how to But we also need to know that when it's time to have a discussion about representation, about representation in fact, we can't place the burden solely on the shoulders of black women alone. We have to do this together. What that means is more inclusive hiring techniques and practices. It means funding, scholarships, and diverse recruitment efforts at the collegiate level. It means teachers and educators learning to create culturally relevant spaces that replace fear with trust for the young black girls in their toothpicks. And it means that when we find allies in positions of influence, that they become comfortable with allowing someone else into that space who can more easily and quickly support the kids that they connect with and support their dreams. And when we recognize that representation is not just something nice to have, but that it's necessary. When we are intentional about inclusivity and cultural relevancy for the young people who are learning and growing based on what we share with them, we begin to bring voice and validation to the fear that historically underrepresented groups feel. And not only do we get, bring voice to it, but we give them confidence to respond to that fear with a fight that doesn't give up and a hope to believe that their fight is not only gonna make a difference for them, but for others who follow in their footsteps. And if we do this long enough, then we will accomplish Hype's mission and vision of empowering a generation that lives their lives full of hope, driven by love, and void of fear. Thank you.